The Sabotage Show is not intended for all audiences. Discretion is advised. All right, guys. This is the Sabotage Show, and I'm your saboteur, the modern Leonoid Canadian here. And uh, today I am talking to, well, uh, I guess you might have guessed a little bit here. It's uh, Patricia. Uh, say hello. Hey, what's going on, guys? Well, um, I really just wanted to uh, kind of uh, conduct an interview with you. I had talked to a couple of the other guys before uh, from the site, and uh, they said you were pretty busy. Uh, but to get this opportunity, and for you to get this opportunity to get your name out there, because that's the point of the show, is to be able to get everybody's content seen and heard and uh, tell us about yourself uh, yeah sure well my name is Patricia I'm the co-founder of the blog Old School Lane I've been a member of Manic Expressions since February 2012 and also um, we're currently doing a Nickelodeon tribute right now and we also do various amounts of other things we have a couple of podcasts such as casual chats where Kevin and I talk about various topics Turtle Talk, where we discuss about the latest upcoming news on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and Nick Jukebox, where I display classic Nickelodeon songs from the 1970s to the 2000s, basically mostly for nostalgic purposes. Mm -hmm. uh, that brings me to my first question. I wanted to ask you, what, when did you get this uh, fascination with Nickelodeon? That is a good question. Um, I've always been really fascinated with Nickelodeon ever since I was very young. 1989, I was three years old, and I saw Eureka's Castle, David the Gnome, and a couple of other little programs. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't until 1991, I was five years old, and I can distinctly remember sitting down at the TV and watching the Ren and Stimpy episode, Space Madness. <laughs> that yeah. was the episode that changed me. Because all the other cartoons I had seen, you know, they were like the typical Saturday morning schlock. But this, however, this was different. The animation and the, ups, the um, what you call it, the, the way that they expressed the, 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 the eyes and mm -hmm. just the, everything was just eye popping and the music. And it was just so surreal and crazy and it just blew my mind. Yeah. And of course, other stuff like Rugrats and... Mm -hmm. Uh, Clarissa, Are You Afraid of the Dark, and what have you, and then I just became a huge fan for many years, and the inspiration for the Nickelodeon tribute started around around December 2012, uh, 2011, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. December 2011, we just started on Old School Lane, just, uh, Kevin and I wanted to discuss about various amounts of topics that we enjoy. And the first thing that I wanted to think of to do something very special that differentiated from any other blog was do a Nickelodeon tribute. Every time that I went online to look up something Nickelodeon related, like reviews or discussions about it, the only thing I saw were rants. Rants of people just saying the 90s were the best, the 2000s sucked, and very rarely do I see somebody like take the time to review um, a few shows. There were people who did that, but nobody has ever done all of them, especially 80 stuff. Yeah. So Kevin and I, we spent six months preparing to watch almost every single Nickelodeon show and movie in preparation for the 35th anniversary, which technically was on December 1st, 1977. Most people mm -hmm. call Nickelodeon's 35th anniversary on April 1st, 1979, due to the fact that that was when they decided to change the name from the Pinwheel Network to Nickelodeon. So we wanted to celebrate the true anniversary, and we were originally doing it as a summer tribute. Mm. But things just started getting crazy, like everyday problems and work and uh, just regular life as it is. And, you know, it started pushing in for like almost a year and a half now. So mm -hmm. we're still on it. And we've met a lot of people along the way. We've gotten great interviews from former Nickelodeon stars. And a lot of people started to like our stuff. And it's been going great. And we're almost done with it. And we'll just see what the next one holds uh, for, the, for the old school lane. Oh, wow. I, got, I, I didn't even know that much about it myself. Um, one thing I did know, though, is uh, uh, they did, like, uh, they basically paved the path for, like, um, paved the path for uh, even South Park, if you look back. Like, you were talking about Ren and Stimpy. Um, it, it, it really pushed, like, the boundaries uh, yeah. back in the day, right? And now, and you, you mentioned the, uh, the, the drawings themselves. They, they want to take the drawing and, and 
it didn't want to be the main focus of the show like a lot of animated series did in the time. So what they did was they tried to dumb it down a little bit for the people so they would pay attention more to what was going on in the show versus just the animation. Which is interesting because Ren and Stimpy was the very first show that was definitely geared toward like an edgier audience. Mm -hmm. This was the show that both kids, adults, college students, and you know, just a, it was basically like a huge demographic, which wasn't intentional. Ren and Stimpy was supposed to be just geared towards kids, mm -hmm. but there was just this huge demographic that the Nickelodeon executives didn't know what to do. I mean, this was their first exclusive cartoon that they've ever made without acquiring anything, mm -hmm. because back in the 80s, Nickelodeon acquired cartoons from other countries. Mm -hmm. So with Ren and Stimpy, it not only was the most popular cartoon in that network, I mean, it was like a huge phenomenon. Everybody was getting into the cartoon. It basically changed animation in general. Back in the 80s, animation was mostly about selling toys or uh, animated shows based on movies or uh, basically um, reboots of something that came out of the 60s like Hanna-Barbera used to do like mm -hmm. um, like Yo Yogi or A Pup Named Scooby-Doo or when they rebooted the Jetsons and Ren and Stimpy was a huge standout and nobody knew what to think of it. Okay. There was a lot of adult content and gross humor, something that would basically transcend throughout the entire 90s. And there will be many reboot, um, not reboots, um, copycats yeah. of the show, like Cow and Chicken and Two Stupid Dogs. And even uh, Rocco's Modern Life would be one and later on SpongeBob. But yeah, um, that was the first time in which I saw, thought to myself, wow. Yeah, it was this, basically this was able to appeal to both audiences in a, a drastic manner. Yeah, and according to a newspaper article that I read, they said that there was no other show that can be able to garner a huge audience since Pee Wee's Playhouse. Wow, yeah, and even I watched that. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Um, it's actually funny, when I first entered into um, the site, That Guy with the Glasses, the very th first thing that I posted over there was my uh, book review of the book called Inside Pee-wee's Playhouse by Cassim Gaines. Mm -hmm. And there was uh, somebody from that guy with the glasses known as Positive Troll who said, hey, I like your stuff. And I said, man, thanks. And then he started following my stuff. And then along the way, he was just telling me about, um, oh, by the way, there's this little website called Manic Expression. Would you like to join? And mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, sure. The time that I joined, there was only 50 members, and Positive Troll later on became less. Oh, I didn't know that. He, I never heard that. Um, I was yeah. going to ask you, though, like, where did you come from? Like, what site did you come from? Yeah, well, besides being Nickelodeon, I'm, I'm a big fan of other things. So uh, just want to let everybody know who's listening that I just don't know. Um, I, I, I may know a little bit more about Nickelodeon than most people, but I don't know everything about it. So <laughs> It sounds like you're building your way up to that point, though. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. So um, uh, what brought you to the site other than that? Was there uh, anybody else that you followed when you joined Manic Expression? Well, yeah. I, I, I knew a couple of the other people who would later on go into Manic Expression. Like, I knew Movie Fan 12. He was also a person who commented on my book review. And then there was also, um, let's see, I think Kyle was there. And that's pretty much it. It was the only people that I did know was Les, Movie Fan 12, and Kyle. Uh, I met James when I entered into Manic Expression. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's kind of how it worked for me, too. I ended up following, uh, it was Decker Shadow, I mentioned this before. Um, and then, see, what my intentions were, were to just go to this site because at the time he was having so many copyright issues with YouTube at the time with uh, his content he was posting on there, that uh, he said, you know what, you can just go to Manic Expression and watch it right now. So I just, that's how I found it. And then next thing you know, I, I found all these other people that I was at, the, at, the, at first not even remotely interested in. And then now I'm kind of hooked. It's hard to really get anything done when you're busy watching these, these videos or reading these blogs. You know, it takes up a lot of time. Yeah, I know. Everybody who's on the site delivers really unique, original content that you wouldn't find anywhere else. And I think it can be addicting once you step out of the whole um, mainstream critics and reviewers and then go into mm -hmm. somebody who's just as good but don't get 
recognized enough. Exactly. And, and a lot of the ones that you're, you're talking about are uh, from earlier times when YouTube was still smaller or they, they had their own sites and they were able to post something and it went viral right away just because there weren't, weren't as many people watching at the time. So it, it was catchier. Like uh, the uh, Angry Video Game Nerd, I think at a time he, I think it was just right timing for that guy. Yeah, you know. it was. Yeah. And uh, so uh, what are your uh, projects uh, for the site? Are you working on anything uh, for the 300 member special? Um, well, yes. Uh, I will be recording something for the 300 member special. Um, it should be interesting of what I'm going to be doing because from what I was told, the 300 member special is going to be doing something a little bit different than the others. So I'll you stay tuned for that. It should be a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to it. I'm uh, apparently going to have a bit of a scene in that as well. I'm not too sure exactly what it is yet, but Kyle's working on that along with the other administrators for the yeah, site. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, what, do you have a Facebook account, uh, Facebook page, sorry, a Twitter account? Yes, I do. Um, you, there's the official Old School Lane Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash Old School Lane. I have a Twitter account, which is twitter.com forward slash P-A-T-T-Y underscore B underscore mm -hmm. Miranda and then there's the Old School Lane website which is oldschoollane.blogspot.com and I will be posting that in the uh, just above the comment section on the site as well so right. people can follow you uh, is there anything else you want to talk about um, well let's see um, anything that you want to ask me regarding about uh, the, maybe the Nickelodeon tribute or maybe you have any questions about myself or um, or maybe Kevin or something. So yeah, anything that you want. Because to tell you the truth, uh, uh, this is actually the first time in which I'm actually interviewed by someone. Uh, yeah. Well, besides Les, of course, he was doing like the great bloggers tribute in which he interviewed Kevin and I. But mm -hmm. as for a podcast, I've never been interviewed. Usually, Kevin and I are the one interviewing other people. Like uh, for the Nickelodeon tribute, we were interviewing former Nickelodeon stars. So this mm -hmm. is actually kind of nice to be interviewed by somebody for once. No, it's definitely a good way to get your uh, your name out there, right? I mean, it's important too, too, because a lot of people out there they 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 reached out earlier and they were able to grasp that audience sooner. But uh, to be able to to grow right now, it's so important, especially for manic expression. I mean, we're the site is growing so much. We were just at a million, and we've even gone up since then. And the members are joining, yeah. So, um, so tell me more about Kevin. Uh, great. Yeah, sure, I'd love to. Uh, Kevin and I. We've been best friends ever since we were in fourth grade. I'd moved from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania to Brooklyn, New York when my parents decided to get back together. And I moved into the, another school, which was PS192. And I was just walking into the classroom and then I saw, you know, Kevin standing there and he was like, can I give you a tour of the class? And I was like, okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> and so he was showing me like the entire classroom and then he was showing me a bulletin board which was filled with made up Goosebumps recipes. Because Goose <laughs> this was 96 and Goosebumps was like really popular at the time. Mm -hmm. yep. And he was a huge Goosebumps fan. And I've read a couple of the books. So we were talking for a little bit and then we talked about uh, a couple of TV shows that we were watching at the time and he liked those too and then um, ever since then we just became best friends we've been best friends for almost 20 years so uh, what ended up happening there uh, did you ju did you guys just decide one day you're gonna sit down and and try to do uh, uh, it's kind of a podcast uh, blogging about Nickelodeon or was it something else did you guys experiment with other things before that um, you know, because I know I did. Uh, I talked to when I was talking to Mark, the big black hat man. It was uh, a, about twelve years ago. Uh, me and a buddy of mine, we were sitting around and we were drinking these these weird coolers, these drinks, and uh, we did this makeshift commercial on, uh, you know, one of the older sites, and uh, posted it. And ever since then, that was like the, that was the last thing I ever did. And uh, so, and then now, like how many years later? I decided, you know what, I would like to, uh, I'd like to do a video and something a little bit more serious than what I did before. So did you guys experiment with different ideas? Yes, we did. Uh, when we were in fifth grade, whenever we went on a field trip, we would always pair up together and we would do like comic strips of the entire field trip, you know, from leaving the classroom to the end of the day, sitting on the bus, and we would, you know, draw pictures of the person who was giving the tour of whatever place we were going at. 
places would include like maybe Carnegie Hall or a museum or the aquarium or whatever and we would draw like the main highlights and he would draw and I would write and then as time went on um, we wrote um, a series that we wanted to pitch to Nickelodeon as a cartoon called Little Monsters. Little Monsters is a story that Kevin mostly came up with and I decided to help him with the writing. Mm -hmm. It's about a group of monsters you know like the classic universal monsters mm -hmm. and typical monsters from mythology and lore that had offspring and they're sending them off into a school named Crypt Academy to learn how to be scary and along the way they have to compete to see who's going to be like the top monster but then mm -hmm. as time goes on they start realizing that scaring kids and adults isn't worth it anymore because monsters are becoming taboo and so as time goes on they have to learn how to be able to stay in society while not being well not being too old-fashioned you know kind of mm -hmm. like that so um we've been we just released the first episode of little monsters via a podcast play for manic expression and we were working on episodes two and three but then we got really busy and then a couple of unfortunate events had occurred between us and it's been slowing down for a little bit but we're hoping to get back to it really soon because we have a really good series and we're hoping to maybe carry it out for maybe two or three seasons definitely yeah yeah because i've been uh, like i said i was following you a little bit on youtube there uh like i said I, i'm pretty busy myself right now so it's hard to uh, get out there and and see everything that i really want to Hopefully, I can kind of get back into the flow of things myself. But uh, I did enjoy that. Uh, I like I like to hear about things, uh, even as an adult. Uh, like I used to listen to or sorry, I used to read the comic books from the Teenage Ninja Turtles and and watch the movies and everything like that. So it's nice to be able to to, to really hear the updates on what's going on. And it, it's hard to find anything that's uh, reasonably easy to listen to. And I found that your show is really good to listen to because you get right down to the topics. You don't you know mess around too much. Yeah, Kevin is the one who usually likes to mess around with stuff. He's the one coming up with the jokes, and I'm the one saying, dude, let's get back on top. I'm sure you probably listened to it in a few other episodes of yeah. casual chats. The first one that we did was Nickelodeon. That was over two hours long because we didn't know what we were doing at the time. Yeah. And, you know, it came from us discussing about, like, Nick Arcade, and I was discussing how Phil Moore was such a terrible host because he said Dr. Robotnik's name wrong. He called him Dr. Roboneck, and then Kevin was all like, well, he's an official fucking moron. It's like, oh, uh, what do you call Sonic? Ronic? What do you um, call Bowser? Boner? And then he was like, you know, um, and then I was just laughing so hard. He's like, yeah, he clearly does not know anything about video games. And he's like, um, yeah, exactly. Tune in next week for the Super Mario Brothers Super Show where Boner is playing... <laughs> <laughs> is playing with his fucking dick. Now it sounds more like the Sabotage Show. <laughs> You've yeah. uh, started where we left off in the last episode. Um, <laughs> yeah, and you know what the funny thing is? You know what Phil Moore is doing now? What? <laughs> He's on G4. Oh. I know. Oh. Now, I was shocked when I heard this. It's like, what? Yeah, yeah. Actually, when you brought up earlier, you were talking about some of the uh, the older shows, and we have a network here. I don't know if it's broadcasted in in the states, but we have a network called YTV, and uh, that's actually where the original uh, "Are You Afraid of the Dark" had aired. Yes, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. I, I've heard of YTV. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, that show was actually aired and and like filmed here in Canada. I believe. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, when I uh, I interviewed the creator of Are You Afraid of the Dark, uh, DJ McHale, and he was telling us about how a lot of the kids that they were hiring were Canadians. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, uh, the actual main character, he, you remember him? He wore the glasses. Yeah, Ross Hull. I interviewed him as well, and nowadays he's a meteorologist. Yeah, he does. Uh, where I live right now, he actually is our uh, on the Weather Network here in Calgary. Yeah, I follow him on Twitter. Nice. I didn't even know he had a Twitter account. I just like to uh, know when cities and towns are flooding around me. <laughs> yeah. Well. Wow. Um, every person that we have interviewed, I, I try to follow them on either Facebook or Twitter, you know, just to show a little respect. There is only one person, however, but only because he posts, like, really weird stuff. I'm not mm. going to say who it is. Okay, yeah. You don't have to, for sure. Yeah, but 
a lot of the people that we've interviewed have been really, really nice. Mm -hmm. And they've been really considerate to taking the time to do so. There was only one person who didn't really have a lot of time, uh, Debbie Derryberry, who's a voice actress known for voicing characters like Jimmy Neutron and mm. Nurgle from The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy and Jackie from Bobby's World. She was so busy that she only had time to answer five questions. And so we just asked her a little bit about Jimmy Neutron and stuff like that. But yeah. other than that, a lot of the people really were really considerate of taking the time for us to interview them. Mm -hmm. Have you ever uh, uh, looked into trying to get Howie Mandel, if that's even humanly possible? <laughs> <laughs> wow, Howie Mandel. Hmm, that would be interesting. You, you know, um, uh, yeah, uh, if we could try. But Howie Mandel, he's like so busy. I mean, he does stand-up. Mm -hmm. He does various shows here and there and movies and you know just a little voice acting from time to time um mm -hmm. yeah that'd be cool um yeah. i don't know if we'll be doing a howie mandel tribute but sure why not that would put you guys over the rail for sure like <laughs> you imagine getting howie mandel i would like to get howie mandel i would just be stuck i wouldn't even know what to say i'd just be like can you speak like bobby the whole time please <laughs> <laughs> that'd be so cool. yeah I actually wanted to do another interview with Mark, and I wanted to see if he could do Wallace the entire episode. I don't know if he could nice. pull it off, <laughs> because nice. that's amazing, right? Um, that would be awesome. So I did want to ask, and I wanted to ask everybody I interview, uh, where do you think and what are your opinions on where the site is currently going right now in its direction? It's slowly getting really popular. I do know that a couple of the people who have been working on various things are slowly getting recognized, just like you said, Decker Shadow mm -hmm. and Long Hair Creepy Guy. Mm -hmm. And I've heard that James has gotten a notice here and there. And uh, we're slowly getting popular. I, I like us to be like the underground kind of site in which we're just posting just as good stuff as all the others. But, you know, when you, it's kind of like people like you and people like Ryan McCarthy. He was just looking at a whim, and mm -hmm. then all of a sudden he came here, and it's like, wow, I didn't know that this place even existed. I'm going to check it out. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I kind of like places like that or, or things like that, you know, in which, you know, it, 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 it deviates from the mainstream, and it gets into the indie. It's more creative. It's more unique, mm -hmm. and it's more underrated because of that. And hopefully, you know, a lot of people wanted to become more mainstream and more popular, which I'm all for. Mm -hmm. And maybe with future projects that we'll be coming up with, we'll definitely be getting ourselves on the top as doing something that not even the mainstream sites have done. Yeah, and and it, you really get a, a good feel of um, that, that human... Uh, emotion and touch. I mean, you can join other sites and you get a computer automated message sent to you, you know, thanks for joining, yada, yada, yada. But with Manic Expression, you get legitimate humans sending you messages saying, thank you for joining and welcome to the site. And that means something to me. And that's probably one of the reasons I actually did decide to start posting on the site as opposed to just being a member and, and doing nothing. Do you feel the same way? Absolutely. Um, the only time in which I did feel that I was a part of something was when I was in a video game tournament group called Wovolution, in which when I did come in, people welcomed me. But then as time went on, I slowly started to see changes when newer people were starting to come in, and it just didn't feel the same, so I left. And I tried to join in other websites and blogs, but I just felt like you know, uh, member number 1,255,479.7. Yeah. I didn't feel like Patricia. Yeah, you feel then, like a number, yeah. Yeah, it's like in those commercials. It's like, you're not a number, you're a person. Mm, yeah, and that's just not how it works anymore with some of those. And I, I feel like, and, and, and really, honestly, the only thing that would worry me about Manic Expression is once we do hit, you know, a thousand members, if not more, um, are we still going to get that same appeal? And I feel like uh, if it wasn't for James and if it wasn't for guys like, you know, even like Kyle or the man with no chin, if, if you don't know who that is, uh, and, and just and, and guys like Big Black Hat Man and uh, that long-haired creepy guy, you know, if it wasn't for people like that, I don't think that uh, the site would have had the same appeal to me personally anyway.
Yeah, definitely. Because everybody who tries to start up a website similar to Manic Expression, they want to be the next that guy with the glasses or the next retroware TV or mm -hmm. what the, the next whatever site is popular at the time. People are trying to suck on the teat that is mainstream audience, making lots of money, getting popularity. But at the same time, they seem to forget where they come from. They seem to forget their roots mm -hmm. and... They just leave that all behind and just get into the popularity. And I think with Manic Expression, even if they do get popular, I think that they can be able to maintain their ground of where they came from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And that's so important right now because the internet is a, is a really big fucking place. And uh, it's like moving from uh, a city to a small town. Like, I, I, I really just come from YouTube, really, but it's like moving from a, a city to a small town. You get the small town feeling, and that's how I feel about Manic Expression. It's uh, it's having milk delivered to your front door again, and the newspaper man, you know what I mean? It's 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 not the same where when you go to a YouTube or that guy with the glasses. I know exactly how you feel, because uh, two years ago, uh, two or three years ago, I was moving into a group home in Sandpoint, Idaho, and when I saw the town, it was a town of 7,000 people, everybody knew one another, they never locked their doors, and everybody was just smiling, and they were all outside, and mm -hmm. it, there was just something about it that I've never seen before, because I was born and raised in cities. Mm -hmm. And seeing a small town like this, it's like something that you see in the movies in which, oh, that can't ha ever happen in real life. Mm -hmm. But, you know, in some places they do. And that kind of definitely reminded me of Manic Expression in which we are like this little underground website that nobody knows outside of the people who are the members. We're a family and we treat yeah. each other like that. We are respectable. We have the golden rule in which we follow. We're not going to have somebody like... Napoleon or Squealer from Animal Farm change the rules at the last minute and then everybody gets confused to what is going on. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we have our standards and we respect those standards. With that guy with the glasses, the moderators and the administrators, they didn't really care about the members. Yeah, There was a lot of controversies with people spamming and there was hatred going on, and that was one of the reasons why many people like myself and Les left. We just didn't feel welcome anymore. It just really felt like some sort of corporate website that just was doing it for the money. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I, that's the one thing I really do like about Manic Expression is it is those rules are, are, are stand strong. And uh, and even myself as a moderator, you know, I have not had to uh, kick anybody or delete anything. Uh, I've, you know, I've warned a couple of people about double posting, but when, when that's the worst case scenario at this point, it's, it's such a positive thing because really they usually follow that right away. You'll, you'll send them a message and then they delete one of their posts. They post it the next day. It's not that hard. And, uh, I like that as a, as a mod personally. Anyway, are you, uh, are you in any way involved in the site in that way? Um, I'm not really a moderator or an administrator, but I do kind of see stuff from time to time. If I notice something, then I definitely report to one of the administrators and point them out what's wrong. But automatically, they would already know what was going on in advance anyway, so. Mm -hmm. Now, as, as a pro and con to the site, um, it's, it's great to see the site growing for sure and uh, having a few advertisements, I guess, uh, on the sidebar. Uh, pros, your site grows and makes money and you can develop uh, a bigger, better website. Cons, uh, you do have more members. Uh, it's harder to keep track of uh, content. It's harder to keep track of uh, the direction of the site just because you get, in re you get really busy. Um, you do get more trolls, of course, with, with more members. Um, I guess I, I would say the biggest pro right now is uh, maybe the idea of keeping the site small. Do you think that we should continue to grow or should we set... Uh, a point where we stop at like uh, maybe a thousand members? Well, that wouldn't be too fair because if, if somebody who had never heard of Manic Expression wants to come along, then they have no obligations not to. That's true. Yeah. No, I definitely. mean, after all, I mean, if we decided to stop at 300, then you wouldn't be here. Oh, no. I guess I'll just delete my account today. <laughs> <laughs> like that. My first, my first work of moderators to delete my own account. <laughs> 
but you, I, I see what you're getting yeah. at. It's kind of like when, when that guy with the glasses first started, mm -hmm. it was kind of like the new frontier. Yeah. It was, it was like the possibilities were endless. People can be able to just post up their stuff and maybe someday they can be able to rise up to the top like many other people such as the Blockbuster Buster or Obscurious Lupa or various amounts of the other people who joined up later on mm -hmm. but then as time goes on the the final the the um the wide open frontier becomes a little bit more crowded and it's being populated by people who just want to do nothing more than just hate mm -hmm. so you kind of want to watch out for that so I, I can understand why you're concerned and I can understand why you want to keep the site growing at the same time it's a double-edged sword definitely you want to keep you want to keep the site growing but at the same time you want to be aware of who's joining in that's going to basically ruin the you know the nice aura that is what the site is right now mm -hmm. or the, the the people that may branch out I guess I'm kind of looking at things and uh, uh, black and white not so much shades gray it's uh, people could branch out and didn't just forget about the site altogether and walk away and you know take their popularity elsewhere you've seen that happen too I'm sure oh yeah many times mm -hmm. yeah so uh, you think it's a good thing that we could continue to grow and you think that as long as uh, you know the admin staff and the moderators are doing their job you think that we could continue to uh, strive towards the goal of uh, you know making the site some money and just getting the name out there We've been doing good so far, and as long as we continue that path, then I don't see why 10,000 would be different than 300. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. That's actually true, yeah. yeah. Have you seen, uh, is, has anybody caught your interest as of late? For Nickelodeon stuff or for my blogs? Uh, for the site, actually. Has anybody, has, has anybody caught your attention uh, blog-wise or uh, videos, podcasts, anything? Uh, yeah, uh, for uh, one thing, I just recently became an admin for the Reopen Nickelodeon Studios in Orlando, Florida Facebook page, mm -hmm. and I've been I saw that, yeah, and I've been promoting my uh, associate websites, which is Old School Lane and Manic Expression, mm -hmm. and a couple of the people who have been following me, they know about Manic Expression. I don't know how many of them have signed up for it, but. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely. There have been a couple of people who even said, "Oh, um, you know, there's that girl from Old School Lame and Maniac Expression." <laughs> it kind of reminds me of a band that you used to listen to when they were underground, and nobody could get their name right. And then one day they get a hit on the radio. And next thing you know, everybody knows who they are, and the song really sucks. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and you're like, "Oh, this isn't the band I used to listen to." And then you stop listening to them, and then you start the cycle all over again. You find another underground band, <laughs> Maniac <laughs> Expression. <laughs> yeah, actually, it was uh, interesting trying to uh, explain that to uh, my girlfriend when she was entering that into a web browser it's manic expression she kept typing in maniac expression <laughs> but <laughs> it ended up working out in the end she ended up uh watching the site now and and she likes it she's not a member because she has no interest in posting anything <laughs> but uh yeah so um i just wanted to plug a couple things and then i'm going to ask you uh, what you're going to be posting on the site actually you know what i'm going to start with that first i want to ask you what are you going to be putting putting on the site uh next well, um, hopefully by next week, uh, 2005 has officially started for the Nickelodeon tribute. Mm -hmm. So we'll be posting things like, uh, the first thing that's going to be posted up is a review of Dan Schneider's th third program, which is Zoe 101, and then uh, the review of Avatar The Last Airbender, mm -hmm. and my top 10 favorite episodes. And then the next one is going to be Cat Scratch. And then I'm going to conclude that with a review of the movie Yours, Mine, and Ours. Mm. And then there's also the X's, I believe, which is which you know I think I'll pro th throw in the side as well. But you know we're just continuing the years of Nickelodeon until we finally reach maybe uh, you know hopefully the end of this year we'll be over with it because uh, Kevin and I want to branch out on other um, projects. Other things, yeah, other projects. Yeah, yeah. And I uh, uh, don't want to give any spoilers out, but what did you think of The Last Air Airbender? You mean the movie? Yeah, the, the animated one, yeah, yeah. Oh, you mean the show? The show, yeah. Um, well, uh, it is the best Nicktoon that has come out in the last decade. It's one of my favorite animated shows of all time. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it has done something that Nickelodeon has not done in a very long time. It has... 
um, an animated show that is based on story, mm -hmm. which most Nicktoons are episodic, that you can be able to just tune in at any time and you won't be able to miss out on anything. And a lot of the characters are very well developed. They're three dimensional, they're memorable, mm -hmm. which is something that, you know, for most Nicktoons, they do have memorable characters, but in different ways. Like they're memorable, be they're memorable because they're they have goofy personalities, or they're straightforward and down to earth. They basically follow an archetype. Mm -hmm. But with this one, we actually got to know their backstory. We get to see them grow and develop over time, which is a rarity. I haven't seen anything like that since As Told by Ginger and Danny Phantom and My Life as a Teenage Robot. Hmm. And also, the one thing I love is the animation. The animation is so different, so unique. Mm -hmm. It's it's basically not like any other Nickelodeon show that came out. Also, the, another thing that I really like, it's um, it, the tone that it has. It's, it's for kids and adults, but in a different way. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned before about Ren and Stimpy, in which it was for kids and adults because of the crazy animation and the wacky characters, but it was for kids and adults in a different way because it had a lot of adult jokes. Yeah. With Avatar The Last Airbender, it has themes. Like, it has themes about war and poverty and death and development of growth. And it's so wonderfully balanced and it's beautiful. And Yeah. It's appealing to so a different surprised. generation, really. I'm sorry? It's just uh, uh, appealing to a different generation of people. Absolutely. And I think it will continue to do so. Because it's just one of those shows that will stick on the test of time. There are people who just absolutely love it. There's a huge fan base, and there are more people rediscovering it and seeing what a great show it is. I think it's definitely going to be up there as one of the best that Nickelodeon has ever done. Yeah, that would no excellent, and I can't wait to to see more about this too. Um, so uh, I want you to uh, tell us a little bit about your uh, Facebook page again and your Twitter account. I want you to uh, just uh, remind people. Sure. Facebook is uh, facebook.com forward slash old school lane. Twitter account is twitter.com forward slash patty underscore b underscore Miranda. And the website is old school lane dot blogspot dot com. Excellent. And I will be posting that uh, just above the comment section uh, for this video when I post it. And also, um, you can follow me on Twitter. That's the Sabotage Show. Uh, you can like the page Facebook. Uh, it is the Sabotage Show. Very simple to remember. And uh, also, just posted the site. It is up and running. That's the sabotage show dot webs dot com. All right, guys, thanks for listening. And thank you, uh, Patricia. Really appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and uh, hope to talk to you soon.